Hello and welcome to another player's guide to role playing episode. And today I will be discussing tabletop role playing rules for life. Well, your character's life or your life at the table. So nothing too dramatic. Um I will be doing so whilst also creating the rest of the party. Um here we have what's happened? Oh, this has happened. Here we have Groger, which I created last time, so I will be creating the rest of the party. Um let's get cracking, so to speak. Bring up the first. Um Yeah. Rules for at the table. Basically some etiquette what to do and what not to do. Um and the first thing I think is also immediately the most important thing is voice your expectations uh, not only to the GM but also to the other players um, and your wishes be clear on what you want and what you don't want um, you're entering a fantasy world science fiction fantasy or at least a made-up world and um, that world is probably uh, not perfect. I mean, if it would be a perfect world, it would be a quite boring game, I think. You're not role-playing like uh, My Little Pony or um, Care Bears or something like that. And um, in the world there is people that lie, people that steal, people that discriminate, people that commit murder or rape or blue sexual acts and other stuff and you have to discuss beforehand with your group if um, that is something that you're okay with that um, you're uh, comfortable playing uh, such things or not um, it can prevent very awkward situations uh, halfway through the game uh, Possibly. So always be clear on what you expect and what you do not want to encounter. But also what you want from the game. Um, what type of adventure you want. Um, what type of setting you like. Uh, if you like puzzles or if you do not like puzzles. You know, stuff, uh, stuff like that. And... Um, you know, if you want to meet a dragon and talk to a dragon, well, speak up. And um, it's not guaranteed that you get your wish and you get it right away or you get it uh, the way you want it. But at least it gives an impression to the players around you why you're in the game and how they can keep you invested. So, yeah, that's always important. Um, another thing is get to know your party members and well I'm assuming you know already know uh, the players you're um, playing with personally but um, also get to know their characters um, not in and out through and through but and, and uh, certainly not in the first 10 minutes of the first session but show an interest in who they are um, it certainly pays off to know uh, at least globally the skills and talents of your co-players characters um, because then you might suggest something they might have forgotten um, but also, it, the interaction between your character and their character is what one of the f basic building blocks of the game. It creates a story, um, it creates interaction with the rest of the world, and it creates input for the GM game hooks that he can launch at you. And um, yeah, it, it builds the team, so to speak. And by extension, also get to know your own character. Um, because nothing is so annoying as asking 
the gym all the time. What's my this stat or what's my this that stat? How good am I at this or how, how good am I at that? You have your sheet in front of you or you have it digitally on your computer provided for you. Um, so it's available to you, get to know your ins and outs, your ups, your tips and tops, your good and bad stats and um, get to know your biography or your background, add to it, flesh out your character as you go. Again, you don't have to do this <laughs> in the first 10 minutes of the first session, you do it as you go. But show an interest in your characters, show an interest in your party members' characters, and that will um, immerse you in the game some more, and, and it will invest, it make you invested in the game some more. Mm, let's see, this dude, uh, high weapon skill, high weapon skill, well, relatively high skills, basic. Basic. Um, mm, intelligence is fairly high, so maybe. Yep, lore. Reichland. Maybe. Evaluate. Mm, we took the fellowship bonus. Super numerate. So evaluate and haggle. Yep. Oh, uh, wait, forgetting something. Uh, five. Three. Uh, probably five. Haggle. Where's Haggle? Five. Two threes. Hmm. Let's see. No. Yeah. Sure, why not? Let's go with that. Base vendor. Cute sense of anything. Hmm. Gossip. Hearing. Yep. Gossip. Uh, acute sense. Hearing. There we go. Um, another uh, point to keep in mind is um, don't forget you're a team. It's not just about you. Um, if you encounter a problem, you're in the woods and uh, you find some tracks uh, leading somewhere just because you discovered them doesn't mean you have to follow them you have to try uh, and follow the track or solve the puzzle or whatever it is that you encountered if you remembered point two get to know your party members you'll probably know who is best at solving the thing you just encountered and you can call them over and say hey look at this thing I found something you're good at this try and solve it um, reversely you can also you know if you're the dude that always solves the puzzles uh, you might get bored of it or get tired of it or other players might get tired of it or you know I think that well hey I have a pretty high intelligence I can try and solve this puzzle for once don't always do the thing you always do you know uh, don't be that guy um, if you encounter something, mix it up a bit and say, hey, what do you think about this? Um, don't hog the the puzzles if you're the puzzle guy, or don't hog the fights if you're the fight guy. It might be interesting to mix it up. And, you know, like I said, don't ignore the talents of your co-players. Their strong points play into it. Uh, I forgot what I was doing. Did all this. Hearing, yep, 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 yep. Okay, time to roll a career. A peasant. A, a very, very, very strong career. 
villager. Um, very all round. You get good skills. Um, melee basic at level 2, I think. Uh, yeah, there we go. It's a very all round thing, but also very boring. Let's see what we get. Um, always remember to ask questions. Very, very important. And preferably try to ask open questions. Don't ask things that can be answered with yes or no. Um, it's not a test of some sorts. It's not... Uh, y you're not graded or anything. There's no... You know, y you can just ask, well, what do I see? The best questions start with a W. What, why, where, who, when. And, of course, there's how. Um, how can I solve this? How can my character get through there? And then it's up to the GM to either tell you the solution or tell you to roll something or ask a question in return. Um, but if you're stuck... Certainly, if you're stuck, don't forget to ask questions and don't f answer yes or no questions. Answer questions that get you a lot of information. Let's see, we uh, runner, messenger, or warden, custodian. Phew. Uh, we're supernumerate and linguistics. Did we take the? Yeah, we took Westlander. Westlander. Um, so yeah, that makes sense. Custodian, he's a custodian. Sure, he's a custodian. Choop. There we go, custodian. Uh, 40, okay. Uh, ask questions, make Notes. Um, of course, if you're a party, you're making party notes. Um, try to keep up with uh, what you've discovered, what the story is about. Um, things like that. But um, take personal notes. Don't just depend on the party notes. Because it kind of shows a lack of interest. Um, you know, it, it, it invites you to not pay as much attention because you can always go like, oh, well, I'll, I'll just read the notes next session. Um, yeah, so make your own notes. Um, you might notice things that other your co-players do not. Um, you might... I uh, think some things are important to your characters that uh, uh, a player that makes notes for the group might not uh, write down. And it's easy to forget stuff because in the, the average session, about four hours, I guess, um, there's a lot of information coming at you and it's easy to forget things. So make personal notes and um, keep them handy. And always... Of course, before you start playing, uh, check them. And if there's some, something unclear about last session, don't forget to ask questions. Uh, he's a custodian, lore local. I'm always confused about what local is. How local is local? Is it like a town or a province or is Roar lore Reichland? Is that lore local? Let's see what it says. Uh, Yours just blah blah blah. That's just lore. Ah, damn it. You know what? Uh, I don't really. He's a custodian. So let's leave it open for now. We'll roll background. We s we'll see where he's from. And then the local will be uh, applicable to, to there. Um. Uh, yes, yeah, something good. Put five points in it for now. Uh, 
Um, yep, five points there. Intuition. A bit of min max there, but could still be no alcohol, willpower, charm, animal, athletics. That's pretty low. Well, just to balance it out. So that's five, ten. 15, 20. Um, they're all pretty... Pretty average. So no, no harm in just going average with this guy. He's not our protagonist of the... of this YouTube series anyway. <laughs> He's... He's just a, for us, he's just a party member. Um, there we go. Um, did I do that? Yes. Uh, there you go. Willpower, strength, toughness. Uh, let's go with strength. Five, sure. Um, well, just, why not? There we go. And details. Mole. Oh, also very young. Short. Um. Yeah. Uh, two ends. Careers. Oh, there we go. Careers. Custodian. Custodian is like a caretaker or something. He's... what's his... silver one. Okay. Mm. What's his name? Mole. Mole. Hmm. He's too old. Do, 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 this dude. Does he have a high? F not really. Mm. This dude looks fun. Let's see. Men. Mm. This dude. Two. Priestly looking to just a little bit too old. Mm. Sure, why not that one? Careers, there you go. Sure. He's a fun looking dude. Career tokens, careers. Update. So more learners. Sure. And there we go. Let's do it again. Um. Yep. Ask questions. Make notes. Um. The power of silence. Power of silence. Can you hear it? Power of silence. Um, basically, if if you ask a question in to a group of people uh, or say something, um, tell them something, uh, and you want them to think about it, uh, you leave a pause. Uh, that pause gives you time to think. Um, People tend to find these pauses, these silences, awkward. You know, the well-known awkward silence. No one to fill it, so they start talking. Um, which is fine in social situations. You're just chit-chatting. But um, often uh, when you're in a group and you're 
communicating with each other because that's what you're doing when you're role-playing. Um, you want to leave some room for others to uh, make up their minds about what they're going to say and leave room to speak up. Um, so don't immediately fill the void, so to speak. And especially uh, this is true for role-playing games because you're not only thinking what you're going to do in a certain situation, so what you're going to say in a certain situation, but also what your character or a character is going to do or say in a certain situation, so you're translating to it. It takes a little bit more time. So don't worry if there's going to be awkward silences, it just means that people are thinking about what they're going to do, how they're going to do it, how to how they're going to ex explain or express what they're going to do. And they're leaving room for others to also say what their character is going to do or not. Um, it can be um, uh, difficult, uh, well not difficult, but awkward and weird uh, because you tend to talk over each other because you all start at the same time or you, you get an idea or something and um, it is uh, a, a good thing to um, make some rules about uh, wanting to say things I mean in, in like in a classroom uh, the students just raise their hand if they want to say something that's a bit weird if you're in a uh, at a playing table um, but the thing we do uh, at our table is uh, everybody has their dice uh, close to, to to hand and if you want to interject or you want to add something to the scene and some people are already talking you put your dice in the middle of the table um, it's a subtle gesture and then they the people that are role-playing can either role-play towards you you know um, uh, engage you in the in the conversation or they can pause or you know they can give you your turn so to speak and also if you feel like the moment has passed or your answer of your question has already been answered been answered uh, in the meantime you can always remove your dice but it's a, a subtle non-intrusive way to um, make clear that you have something to add or something to say or something to ask of course in a setting like this you can just uh, type something uh, of a question or something and then you won't interrupt the flow of the game so much so it's it's uh, a good way to um, to do it it might feel a bit um, artificial or, 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 or forced in the beginning because you're not used to it, you just, you know, it, it's not an organic uh, conversation. Like, a, it's not like an organic conversation. Uh, but I, I, I have experienced that it helps um, the effectiveness and the, the flow of the game. And once you get used to it, it, it becomes very natural. So, let's see. what Who is this? A human? Human. Uh, there we go. Busevi or Swarf. Also linguistics. Warrior born twice. Uh, let's re-roll this. And uh, lightning reflexes. Doomed. Uh, do 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 do. Linguistics. Let's go with Savvy. Chup. Oh. Chup. Mm, and... Wow, what, what's this even do? You can probably do this. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, the power of silence. Um, communication discipline in and out of character. Uh, yeah, well, this builds on the putting dice forward if you have something to say. Um, communication discipline is very important to keep track of what's going on. 
um, if you're in a room where the, the typical party is like four players and the GM or three players in a GM so it's four to five people if they all start talking at once it's chaos uh, it's very hard to keep track of things that are going on especially for the GM um, so that's why this communication discipline is important and also um, I have had situations <laughs> where I'm speaking with someone and they're speaking in character and I'm speaking out of character and it's a very confusing situation or the, the other way around. So always um, decide beforehand uh, with your group. Uh, if you're saying something, it is assumed, for instance, you can assume that whatever you're talking and it's assumed that's in character. And if you're going to say something out of character, you stipulate that you're speaking out of character by saying, well, this is, well, you know, it is Bob. This is Bob talking. Uh, I want to know this and that. Or you can do it vice versa, where you're assuming to be speaking out of character. And when you're in character, you can say, well, Groger. Uh, is speaking now and he wants to you know so but anyway however you do it try to make it clear that you're speaking in character or out of character uh come on did this uh we want to do uh career a student a student at the fencing school uh I don't think so. This is this is a warrior born. Literally. But also linguistics. Uh, let's see what we get. A well, a hustler, a custodian, two custodians. Why not? Could be. A hustler student. Hmm. A board. That's like a hooker, isn't it? Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, uh, yeah, we could be a rogue, a rogue of sorts. Streetwise. Grew up in the big city. And uh, had to fight, fend for ourselves. So we learned. To brawl, do we have a brawl or anything? Rabbi Charm, some alcohol, gamble, haggle. No melee skills whatsoever. Oh shit, did I forget to. I did, didn't I? I forgot to do these. Uh, well, naturally, these. And. Uh, linguistics. Again. Uh, let's mix it up. He's also Wastelander. Uh, there we go. And since he's warrior born, uh, fairly, we give him a bow. Oop, there we go. Uh, Wastelander three. And let's give him Bretonian as well. Just for fun. Um, five, five, three, three. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Five, three. Uh, leadership. Leadership, sure. Uh, so now, I don't like any of these. I don't like any of these students. No, let's choose a career. Or we can reroll just once again. See what we get. Position. Right. This is. This is more like it. It's like a, a hired hand. Isn't it? Yeah, that's what we are. Maybe we're a wastelander. We're, we're just a mercenary. Yep. Like current. Uh, okay. 
Um, so yeah, communication in and out of character, very important. More important than you think. Um, this is a fun one. Don't be a rules monkey, don't be a lore monkey. Um, this is <laughs> a very difficult one for me. Um, when you're a player, you, you, you know, um, most players tend to know some of the rules. They might have a basic rule book. They don't have the um, GM's rule book most of the time. But sure, surely they are f probably familiar with the lore. Certainly the more experienced you are as a player, um, the more you know about the game, the more you know about the world you're playing in. And it's easy to uh, correct people when they get a rule wrong. Uh, easy to fill in when they're not, uh, when they don't have a rule handy uh, at uh, right at the at the t at the time at the moment exactly immediately. Um, you might fill in things about the world. Uh, you know, it's. The GM has created a scene, and you say, "Well, that's very uncommon because of rule this or lore that, or uh, that's weird, or doesn't he have a such and such because of rule this or lore that?" Um, it's annoying. It's really annoying. Nobody likes a rule monkey or a lore monkey that's con constantly spewing rules or lore uh, all the time. Well, outside of game, sure, it's fine. It's really appreciative, you know, I, you can go back and, uh, you know, uh, after the game with your GM or fellow players and say, well, you know, that thing that happened there, well, I, th I thought it was a bit weird because of rule this or law that. Then it is a, it's a different con conversation. But in-game, in the scene, um, it's best to avoid it. Of course, if someone is, you know, trying to find uh, a rule or is unclear about it, uh, give them the moment to come up with them with it uh, themselves or come up with a solution that fits and um, don't go spewing the the rule you can always say well I think it's uh, I think I know it and then they can, if they want they can uh, ask you or you know or maybe they will ask you anyway because they probably know you know all the rules um, but try to, if you are a player, just lay back and let the thing play out uh, and only help when it's really needed, when, uh, when, uh, when the game runs aground, so to speak. Um, just remember the, the GM or DM is in charge, so to speak. It's their game, their rules. Um, they might house rule things. Um, they might treat lore differently because of preference. So, yeah, don't <laughs> just don't be ru a rule monkey or a lore monkey. And I'm certainly guilty of doing that now and again. It's a uh, it's difficult not to, but just be aware that you're doing it. You know, <laughs> at least you can apologize afterwards. Um, and still, you know, if you think you you know all the rules. You know, just like I, I said before, I, I, I think I know all the rules here, but there's still stuff that I don't know. So you might assume something that's and you assume it different, uh, wrongly, differently. Um, a protagonist. Um, let's go with the skills first. Oh shoot! I forgot to take a talent for the other guy. We'll do that later. Um, in fighter, dirty fighting, medicine. Another warrior born. Can you take it multiple times? You can, can't you? No, only once. Um, menacing. You have a you can use intimidation skill. Mm, that's nice. In fight. Oh, cancel. In fighter. We were skilled at drawing in close. Uh, this all dep a lot of these things depend on optional rules. 
Um, it depends on if you use that in the, the weapon length and stuff like that. Uh, in the game where I'm a player, I think we do use it. Uh, in the game I GM, I don't use it. That's so that up to um, dirty fighting. Brawling. I don't have brawling. Uh, could be interesting. Chup, chup, chup. Um, Meta basic. Uh, so we could take melee rolling. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. So let's do dirty 13. It's free. Um, whoop. Melee. Yes. And make it. Brawling. that again I forgot how to yes let's leave it that case we know this is rolling I forgot how to do that uh, boom why not then there we go entertain taunt sure uh, uh, no this is our profession so that's 20. Um, dodge, sure. Imitate. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Oh, shit. 5. And I want to spend experience. And dodge, 5. So that's 30. We need to negotiate for money. There we go, 40. Yep. Um, do all this later. Uh, details, details, details. There we go. Celicia. We're a female. Mm, sure, why not? Um, I like I said before in the other video. I personally am not really comfortable with playing women, not because I don't like women, but <laughs> just because I really suck at playing women. But this is a uh, another party member, just for the video series, so it's more like an NPC. So it's fine. Uh, Cecilia Jolwer. And we got two female players, so maybe one of them. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, boop, boop, boop. Anything more we need to do? Uh, choose a picture. There we go. Uh, custom tokens. Curious. Have we got any ladies here? Probably. Hmm. No. 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 <laughs> no. Uh, women. Where are the women? Where are the women? Uh, sure. Fighty. IT character. Yep. Uh, yep. 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 Oh. Uh, a typical example of uh, discussing what you expect and what you want, what you don't want. The uh, setting we're playing in, the Warhammer setting is a rather <laughs> bigoted or biased society um, um, 
where well it, it reflects um europe in uh, like the 15 1600s so a female um, mercenary would be rare uh, and you can argue uh, beforehand if you're going to abide by that strict of a setting or you just do a more <laughs> woke version of uh, Warhammer if you want uh, but it's something you have to discuss and certainly a uh, rules or a lore monkey would interject and say well it cannot be you have to be a dude or they will say well you can be whatever you want because it's in the rules so either way discuss it beforehand um for now this person is okie dokie there we go uh yeah do you remember number three well four three one two three four and there we go Oh yeah, we got to do this. More mm. awareness. He's a custodian. He gets a free talent. Sharp. Sharp is initiative. Sure. Menacing is intimidation. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, let's go with this. There we go. Um, this person. Sure. There we go. He won. So glad I didn't roll a dwarf for an elf. Um, because if I rolled a dwarf for an elf, I would not not have any fun, and the game should be fun for all players. And don't forget, the GM is playing too. Um, they're role playing. I mean, you're role playing a character. They are role playing everything else and everyone else in the game. Uh, of course, they've made up a story, so they're like meta gaming as well. They're above the story in the scene and the, and the playing and they're with their nose in the books and the rule books as well half the time but they are certainly in the room to have a good time and to be playing a game uh, so don't forget that um, the NPCs may be your enemy but the GM certainly is not your enemy I would say well, remember that old Dungeons and Dragons cartoon? Um, it had this dude, I think he was called Mentor or something, a little dwarfy guy with a red rope. And he would pop up every now and then to aid the characters or give them some advice. That's a GM. Um, that's it's one of the, I think, even the main purpose of the GM. It's not just to unfold the story, but that's easy. Just this is the scene this is happening this is the scene this is happening but they're aiding you in your in the unfolding of your adventure and that's why they're there that's what they think it's is fun so make sure they have fun so that's why you should ask them the questions the open questions and that's why you should not be a lore monkey or rules monkey because then they won't have any fun So yeah, but again, I think the first thing to do and the most important thing to do and to remember it always is always voice your expectations and wishes, wishes. be clear on what you want and what you don't want. If you don't want the racist <laughs> to encounter a racist uh, who hates dwarfs or elves or whatever, you know say it and if you're okay with it you know that's fine uh, it can be fun to have uh, all those kinds of dastardly people in the in the world um, if you like a more mature game so to speak um, certainly there have been examples on uh, on YouTube where apparently people didn't discuss it beforehand or they didn't read the room so to speak and there was uh, some sexual encounters and there was players 
clearly uncomfortable with uh, such uh, things in the story. So it's one of the most important things to go about. What do you expect in the game? What do you expect for your character? Uh, what do you expect from the world? Are any uh, do's and don'ts, no goes, or is anything possible? Anything goes. Yeah, the most important thing, the most important rule. Um, one more person to go. Uh, we rolled a human. Did I do this? Yes, I did it. Uh, let's see. Boop, boop, boop. Ooh, tough. Ooh. Mm. High agility and high dexterity. And uh, pretty high fellowship. Okay. Um, flee, that makes sense. Very strong. Well, not really, but this is a thing that I find weird. Um, it says you're very strong, but you're weak. Even let's say I rolled a twenty, I rolled the lowest possible, then I would be still not be very strong. So it's a weird thing. It's a uh, it irks a bit, so to speak. But it's what we rolled. So there we go. Flee six cents is always nice. Savvy or suave. Um, savvy. Perhaps go all the way savvy, or even it out a bit. Mm. Six cents and flee. That means we're sensible enough to know. Who when to split um sure let's go with savvy there you go you can it out a bit um skills uh, the, the dexterity right what's dexterity nothing is dexterity well maybe yeah here we go I guess we're a bit equal on the savvy and the intelligence. Oh yeah, toughness was high. Toughness. Mm. We are tough, but not strong. Mm, but our willpower is low. Maybe we're an outdoorsy type of person. Uh, yeah, because that's labor, so to speak. Not academic. Yeah, well, animal care. Animal care. So that's five. Animal care is also five. And uh, let's take. We're rural, so probably gossip. A small town person. Oop, and so haggle three. Let's take evaluate three and charm three. There we go. There we go. Um, career the landsman. We're seaman. Or a sea woman, a sea person. <laughs> uh, yeah, or a seaman. Uh, river folk. Oh, I mean, that's the class, of course. Seaman, seaman, seaman. Six cents. Every very strong. I don't think strong. Oh, yeah. Agility and dexterity, sailing, mending sails and ropery or whatever you call it, tackles. I, I'm, I'm not a sailor. Um, hey, it's the Dread Pirate Chorus channel, so sure. There we go. 
Um, fisherman, strider, strong back, strong swimmer. Flee. Flee, flee. They're very strong. Shh. Yeah. Do we have swim? Yeah. Hmm. We're a swimmer. And then we have. Yes. Swim. Let's put at least. We're a strong swimmer. So, 10. There we go. We're a bad sailor and a strong swimmer. Uh, because if you're a bad sailor, you have to swim a lot. Um, five. It's already pretty high. Really brawling, sure. Uh, we're a sailor. Then there we go. Uh, that's twenty-five. Thirty-five. There we go. And forty. Climbing the the mast and the ropes. What do you call those things? Row. We're not a rower. No, we're a sailor. There we go. Um, talent. I already took it. The famous, famous bucket with mop. Um, there we go. Enderlin Hertward. No idea if that's a dude or a dudette, but who cares? Um, wow. Six foot three, is that tall? How much is a foot? Foot is six foot three. That's like uh, one meter eighty five or something. That's pretty tall. There we go. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, is it a dude or a dudette? Is it important? Oh, I know. <laughs> uh, oh. uh, the perfect token for this person. Uh, yep. yep. Uh, sort of a non-binary <laughs> person. <laughs> there we go. Um, image. Custom. They look like an Enderlin. Uh, here we go. Update token. Uh, there we go, Enderlin. There is our party. Um. Yeah, six foot three is one meter, one meter and eighty-two centimeters. Okay, so fairly, fairly tall. Uh, there's a party. There's Groger. There's Cilicia. There's Mole, and there is Enderlin, a actor, a um, hired hand, a mercenary. So it's a custodian, and a sailor, a surely a motley crew. Um, yeah. That's it for the um, for now. This was uh, the TTRPG rules for life. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will catch you next time. Bye bye.